He is the new head coach and the homecoming king. When it was announced in December that Paul Chris would replace Gary Anderson as the head Badger football coach, it was destiny realized for his childhood friends. Susan Simon went back to the old neighborhood to talk about a connection that goes back 70 years. I want to tackle somebody. That's what I feel like. <laughs> In I wanna, slow motion? Or? I want to hit somebody. <laughs> they were the well, bad yeah. news bears of Vilas Park, and their quarterback is finally home. Paul Christ is back on the same field where he earned three letters at his alma mater and in his dream job. It must be surreal for you on some level that your life has come full circle. Does it feel like that? It dawned on me when I was showing a couple of coaches the area. Yeah. And then when I was talking about, here's this, this is where we went to grade school, this is where my dad's buried. You know, that's when it, it kind of hit me. Yeah. And yet, there's also a freshness to it. My reaction was, how rare is it that the best decision is the easiest decision. Barry is... cleared it with John first, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and you? Yeah, yeah, you've got the green light, Barry. The athletic no, board I mean... and John. Jim Roach and his big brother John have known Paul as long as they can remember and still call him by his childhood nickname, Heimer. What does Heimer mean? It's from the song John Jacob Jingle Heimer Schmidt. Jimmy probably has the most number of nicknames. Oh, yeah? <laughs> None of them we can say. <laughs> what is he really like? The real Paul Christ? Yeah. I don't know if you could handle it, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> you can't handle it's the not, truth. The real not, story is not pretty. These two right here. The five Christ kids and the six Roach siblings lived right next door to each other in a quiet neighborhood on Vilas Avenue. We could hear the Badger band warm up on football Saturdays. You could hear the crowd cheer when no one was going to Badger games. You could still hear them cheer. You guys lived here. Yeah. Chris lived here. We lived right. here. Yeah. Yeah. And who moved in first? Roaches were here long before. We just want to be like them, so we finally <laughs> Not <anymore>. worked it up. <laughs> Do you remember when they moved in? Do you guys remember? Absolutely, it was a celebration. You would never know who was, which, who was going to eat which, with which family, you know? It's just, is Kathy eating with us or, you know, uh, you know, Jimmy's, I think Jimmy's eating with the Chris, but he could be lost um, down at the zoo. We don't know. There was a path worn between the, the side doors here. I never thought you'd go ask the neighbors for a cup of flour. You just go over right. and you just, I knew where everything was at. It You're was right. effectively one house. Yeah. Really? Separated by a little line of shrubs. They went to Blessed Sacrament School, played football and baseball, took family vacations, and lived for Packer Sundays. They're all the Roach Boys and all the Chris Boys sitting in the little TV room we have here, just walls of adolescent boys and, and our dads. And uh, with no cue whatsoever, as soon as uh, uh, went to commercial, <laughs> we would all get down on our knees, the older brothers, and Jimmy and Heimer would try to do goal line leap over us, <laughs> and my mom would casually walk out of the kitchen and hold the lamp in the dining room, <laughs> and then as soon as the commercial stopped, they were gonna go sit down and watch the game, and my mom would walk back into the kitchen. <laughs> it sounds like you had an absolutely idyllic childhood here. It was Is that neat. how you would describe it? it, it you don't know any different, right? But it was it was pretty special. And until, um, until in 1979, when you walked up in that porch and said, "We're moving to Platteville," <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "Platt, what? Are you kidding me?" In seventh grade, Paul's father George moved the family to Platteville to coach the Pioneers. But as the years passed, they all stayed connected, even as Paul's career moved him 13 times. And I would bet you each game I'd have eight or nine texts from Jimmy what was that? while the game was playing. <laughs> right. I'd have suggestions at halftime for maybe some better play calling. What do you think has sustained this friendship over moves and marriages and kids and what? That's a, that's a good question. I think the just roaches the, love the Chris and the Chris love the roaches. Yeah. Honestly, that's the shorthand. The roots I'd run do, so I view the, the Chris brothers like my brothers. It's family, you know, not friends. In fact, I like some of the Chris brothers more than my brothers. <laughs> my real brothers. That's fair. We'd be up for some trades. <laughs> We're so happy for you, Heimer. <laughs> It's going to be a very busy summer for the Christ family as they complete the transition from Pittsburgh back to Madison. Paul and his wife, Robin, have three children. Daughters Katie and Jojo are students at Pitt, and their son Danny graduates from high school next month, and he will be a freshman at UW-Madison next year. So Eric and Michelle, the next chapter of this story is about to be written by the next generation. Very cool, and we can all start calling him Heimer. <laughs> Just wait until the next news conference when a reporter says, oh, excuse me, Heimer. <laughs> that hasn't 
happened yet. Oh, sorry, coach. <laughs> the secret is the out. The secret is but out. After all those moves, what a great feeling it has to be to be home. Yeah, it's amazing, place. isn't it? And it's really, um, it's a friendship where, you know, you have friends like this. They know who you are because they know who you were. Yeah. That you've traveled a long road together. It's great to finally have them home. Neat story. Yeah. Susan, thanks. You're welcome.